Hi, I'm Will Gerling, I'm a sports and performance nutritionist, and today I'm going to be talking to you about a review paper that covers the most effective supplements that will improve your performance. So, our supplements are broken down into caffeine, creatine, nitrates, beta aniline, and sodium bicarbonate. These are the most effective supplements for performance. It's about recovery, not specifically about acute performance. To get into our paper, we're gonna start off with caffeine. So how does caffeine improve performance? Well, it is a, an adenosine receptor antagonist. It is in, increasing endorphins. It is improving alertness and awareness. It is reducing your perceived exertion and pain and it also increases neuromuscular function. So there's a whole host of things that it is really good at. If we just look at endurance performance, there was a study by a guy called Garnio et al and he looked over a, a meta-analysis of 33 trials, 21 papers and saw around a three and a half percent improvement to endurance performance across the board. And pretty much all the studies that you look at will see a performance improvement. If we look at high intensity interval based training, whether it's on your bike or running or just circuits, Antonio Robinson saw across 65% of the papers in his meta-analysis paper that you saw a performance improvement of around 6.5%. So caffeine is very well researched, it definitely works and it is cheap and inexpensive. So how much do you need to take? You need to take three to six milligrams per kilogram body weight, and it takes an hour from ta tablets to reach peak levels in your blood. So taking that an hour before your race or your event, uh, three to six milligrams will improve performance. So if you've taken your preload and you're racing and your race is longer than 80 minutes, we have also seen that taking 100 to 200 milligrams of caffeine during that event can improve performance by around four to seven percent as well. Incredible. Caffeine definitely improves performance. Remember though, it's three milligrams at least to improve performance if you are taking it before your event. Three milligrams per kilogram body weight can be, if you're obviously a 70 kilo individual, will be 210 milligrams. Your typical espresso, Red Bull, has 75 milligrams. A single espresso is not enough, so you'll probably need three, usually. Unless you're super light, then maybe two. Our next supplement, creatine. Now, I actually have done another video on creatine, check that video out after this. Creatine improves our creatine phosphate stores and that has an effect on our ability to perform high intensity interval exercise. Now, if you are a runner, cyclist, anything like this, you will do those at certain parts of your training. Now we've seen improvements of around five to 15% increase in performance improvement in interval training by a guy called Lanters et al. 2017. And there are plenty of other studies that back up this research. There is a whole host of research about it. It is effective for you in endurance sport if you are doing a certain period of training with lots of intervals. Is it VO2 max intervals? Is it sprints, your 1020s, your 2040s? It will help with these. How to take it? You wanna take it at 20 grams a day for five days to load it, and then take between three and five grams a day thereafter for that period, okay? It will come with some water retention, but that's just drawing more water into the muscle. It's not real weight, you haven't gained fat, you, it's just a bit of water retention, and that will vary from sizes. But check out that video I've done, and you'll hear more about creatine and its effect on cycling performance in particular. <laughs> Next up, we have nitrates. You may have heard about these. It's your beetroot, it's your beetroot juice, it's your beet it shots, it's your dark leafy greens. And all these nitrates get converted into something called nitric oxide within our body. And that nitric oxide increases our blood flow through something called vasodilation, which is opening up all our blood vessels to get more blood through. And it also does it by reducing our oxygen cost to create. ATP, our energy, and that for the same force production, which in turn improves performance. 
which sounds pretty awesome, to be honest. Now, there's a whole host of information and studies out there, and most of these studies show that there is a performance improvement. All of these range between four and 25%, as shown by such studies by Jones and Thompson et al, 2014, 15, and 16, uh, respectively. And that 25% is more for the amateur, untrained individual, and that 4% more being towards a trained individual, and maybe a bit less, around 1% to 2% improvement for your elite and your professional. But that's still a performance improvement nonetheless. Now, how do we get that? Taking 400 milligrams two hours before activity sees a performance improvement, more so in that untrained individual. And if you're quite well trained or highly trained, you want to be taking 400 milligrams twice a day for two to four days. Now, the improvements here seem to be coming more from sub-maximal exercise. So your TTs, anything that's triathlon based, anything that is TT based, or your breakaway efforts where you're not at a full all out sprint, you are doing a, a sustained sub-maximal effort. But it's a very inexpensive choice, but I wouldn't do it all through your training. I would pick and choose where you do it. I would practice it and then using at events would be most ideal. Next up, we have beta aniline. Beta aniline is an intracellular lactate buffer, which helps reduce the amount of hydrogen ions produced and which would in turn affect our pH level of the muscle and prevent acidosis and the production of lactic acid. So that burning sensation you get when your legs start to fatigue and that builds up. So essentially, beta aniline is slowing the buildup of that acid. Now, the performance improvements from that seem to range from around two to 3% by Saunders et al. 2016 for the general trained individual. And it can be more like 0.2 to about 1.3% for the highly trained individual coming from Chang Bagui et al 2016. I don't know how to say his name. Once again, it's still a performance improvement and it depends on how important it is to you. Beta aniline is very inexpensive. You need to do a loading phase of four to six weeks of about four to six grams a day. Now you do need to divide that up. Otherwise, if you take four to six grams in one dose, you will get something called paresthesia and you get all this tingling over your body and itchiness and it'll be a bit uncomfortable. So I recommend taking three two gram doses or four 1.5 gram doses spread through your day. Best off just taking it with your meals as well. Once you've done your load, you just need to go to maintenance and that's three grams a day and there is no detriment for just continuing to take that forever onwards. But if you want, you could naturally cycle off it at the end of your season. Last up, we have sodium bicarbonate or bicarb, and this is an extracellular blood buffer. So beta aniline was intracellular, and this one is extracellular. So we're getting both sides of that muscle membrane. And it does the same thing. It helps with the reduction of acidosis and buildup of lactic acid in the muscle. So you can work harder for longer. Now, sodium bicarb has a lot of maybe worries or a uh, bad rap for GI distress. And definitely if you take it on a whim, you'll probably be running to the toilet rather than running to the finish line. But it is very proven in science. It has a great performance improvement. And my recommendations for you to take it would be between 0.2 to 0.4 grams per kilogram body weight, taking that with about 20 to 40 grams of carbohydrate, 90, to 60 minutes before the start of exercise or your event or race. Now, practice that. It will help. Start with a smaller dose of 0.2 grams, and maybe if you don't notice a difference, go up to 0.3. I doubt you'll probably need 0.4. Most of the research is taking 0.3, and it takes it about 60 to 90 minutes before the start. The carbohydrate with it is just helping reduce those GI effects if you do get them. Try it on a turbo at home first, just better to be safe than sorry. I mentioned that they were both intracellular and extracellular. 
which creates a great stack. Taking them together is gonna to improve performance above and beyond taking them on their own. And then if you take nitrates with them as well, you're increasing that blood flow to the muscle and then you're working both sides of that muscle membrane, allowing you to prevent that buildup of lactic acid at the best way you can. Now that's my five top supplements, most proven to improve your performance on race day. And everything else out there isn't that well proven. This is coming from research from papers that looking at multiple reviews of the current data out there. If you're looking at things like uh, beta hydroxymethylbutylate or HMB, if you're looking at CLA, BCAAs, um, essential amino acids as well, EAAs, glucosamine, L-carnitine, none of these improve actual acute performance. And some of them do other things, so you know, BCAAs and essential amino acids have been shown to improve, uh, to stimulate muscle protein synthesis and aid in some level of recovery or prevention of muscle wastage in calorie deficits and so on. But we're talking about performance and there's nothing else out there really other than these supplements which will improve it. Now, if you really enjoyed today's video, drop a comment down below. Let me know what supplements you're taking, what things you've tried and what things you're currently taking. And I'll get back to you. Let me know my thoughts on those items. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll speak to you soon. Thanks. Bye.